Welcome back to everybody. Uh, we are now uh, starting the afternoon section uh, that uh, in the first part uh, will be dedicated uh, to a presentation about the results of the projects that offer the opportunities to be here today because this project uh, and that is concluding its activity in, uh, in September this year was a three, more than three year projects. Um, Mr. Uh, Luke Palman actively participated and contributed uh, to, to the project uh, and uh, he will introduce uh, us uh, the results uh, of the main activities that was uh, uh, realized under a key uh, work package of the project uh, that was uh, uh, leading to the presentation of case studies and in particular to the definition of a new roadmap for actions supporting the transfer from uh, science uh, to enterprises along the, the world value chain uh, from uh, uh, the research obtaining advanced results uh, to their application and uh, in industry and uh, the market. So I will leave uh, the word to uh, Mr. Liu Palmer to uh, give us some insights about these activities. It's up to you, Luke. Thank you, Thank you very much. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I don't see you, but you see probably me. Yes. Um, I will shortly comment our uh, uh, activities uh, we've done during the past three years under the Plastis project. Uh, after my presentation, uh, Mr. Grzegorz Banowski uh, uh, of Sopro will also present uh, his part and uh, Andrzej will also be involved if I understand well. But first of all, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have been focusing in the past three years on uh, the preparation of a so-called roadmap for action. Why is it so important to work on uh, the value chain as a whole? Uh, in the case of biodegradable plastics, of bioplastics, uh, we see a lot of initiatives in Central Europe and we see a lot of initiatives being uh, organized by uh, R&D institutions as well as by companies. Uh, everybody is trying to get a step forward, but mostly they are small initiatives, mostly they face uh, severe barriers for scaling their economic initiatives. And this is mostly also because of the fact that there are certain activities around these companies, certain dynamics uh, going on in society, going on on the legal level, that uh, form some kind of a barrier for the activities. That's also why it is important to focus on the overall value chain uh, of which uh, Plastis was the main uh, process project, you can say in the past three years in Central Europe. As you can see, uh, we have this joint R&D scheme uh, which was developed in the first stage of the project where we try to combine the uh, competences and experiences of the R&D institutions in our consortium. On the other side, closer to market, you have the joint advisory scheme uh, about which uh, Grzegorz will explain something more uh, after my presentation. Uh, the main goal of the preparation of the R&D scheme and the roadmap was to improve the access to scientific knowledge from the side of the industry. When we did analysis before handing in the project and the call for proposals, man many companies said that they are looking for a partner in the R&D sector, but they can't find this partner. They even don't know which kind of questions they should ask concerning their problems which they faced with uh, biodegradable polymers. So, uh, in a way, this roadmap and the R&D scheme had to bring together the two sides, the R&D institutions on the one side, the companies on the other side, and that's also why we did interviews with company representatives to know what are the main issues raised by companies during their growth process, innovative projects concerning uh, sustainable polymers, sustainable plastics. We delivered three workshops with our consortium partners and representatives of the R&D institutions and companies in order to streamline the main ideas and the uh, experiences of several countries because in total under Plastis we had four countries involved and each of these, these countries were on a different level of uh, progress for what concerns uh, biodegradable uh, polymers, plastics and so on. And based on this we did uh, in the first stage about eight uh, case studies 
which these case studies showed can create cooperation issues between companies and R&D institutions and they helped us to uh, verify on what level the joint R&D scheme and the roadmap were uh, focused on the real specific needs of companies. So you can see that over a period of almost 30 months, on the one hand you can say, oh, it's too long, uh, why did it took so long? But on the other hand, a lot of things happen in these two and a half years, three years, um, especially for what concerns the case studies, which delivered us the opportunity to give some uh, impact and uh, to get some feedback from concrete issues in the market uh, on uh, the issue and the, the, the themes we were working on but also important the uh, time we needed for the refinement of the tools because like I said, the needs, for instance in Italy, uh, the needs identified by companies were a little bit different from those in Slovenia, Slovakia and in Poland. So we had to uh, prepare some kind of uh, document, some kind of roadmap, which is uh, general enough to cover the issues of the several countries, the different countries. So, uh, in total, if you look at a certain uh, action plan, then during these past months we focused on uh, competence analysis. And here we saw in the beginning that uh, most of the R&D institutions in Central Europe are mostly focused on the first stages of R&D. Uh, whereas companies are looking for concrete practical uh, answers on their production questions. So, we had to bring together the questions from companies with the current competences in the R&D institutions. And the mapping of these competences allowed us to see where are the so-called white spots and how to fill them in. Uh, then we prepared the R&D scheme and we organized the workshops together with the case studies as a basic point for our roadmap. What is interesting, the roadmap, probably you have the printed version, it's in English, Italian, Slovenian, Slovakian and Polish. Uh, probably also Andre already uh, translated it in other languages. But the roadmap uh, goes specific on areas of intervention where companies have severe problems or challenges to cope with uh, concrete material issues. So. Uh, Often the first question is, what type of biodegradable polymers will fit best with my current processing technology? Yeah. How can I uh, secure that the quality of the imported uh, polymers is still and at any time uh, guaranteed? Uh, how can I adjust the properties of my polymers in order to receive a product that the market will accept? How can I uh, combine technical and technological feasibility with economic feasibility? and how can I determine the percentage of uh, renewable carbon in my product. So, certain questions which we also saw that during conferences, workshops with companies, they, these questions were the main questions raised by uh, their representatives. Uh, what did we do exactly in Poland to show the case of the uh, impact of uh, the project, the Plastis project in Poland? For instance, uh, during the, half, the last half year, the last six months, uh, first in November 2013, we focused on uh, interviewing a group of 100 companies. And we saw that uh, among these 100 companies in the plastic sector, about 70 is confronted with uh, restructuring or with closing. Uh, we have to take into account that the economy is changing all the time. Those that stay where they are, they go backwards. So you have to invest in your future. And we saw a very severe problem in our local economy that of the 100 selected companies, almost 70 are facing restructuring. So only 30 of these companies were interested in uh, a growth strategy on uh, plastics for the future of which only 11 companies uh, were currently developing biodegradable plastics and focusing for the future on this issue. Then July, so recently in July 2014, uh, we contacted a new group of 250 companies of which 137 companies were prepared to cooperate with us in an interview and in a research process. 
and out of these 137 companies, one fourth has already been experimenting with uh, biodegradables in the past two years, but only one fifth out of this group uh, is confident to go further uh, with these uh, materials, with these new materials, and to uh, create new products for the market. Uh, taking into account these activities, we organized in September, uh, on the 11th of September in Warsaw, a meeting with companies and R&D institutions. We had uh, 30, 43 participants from companies and uh, 36 participants from R&D institutions, and we did this kind of progress discussion. So there's a real interest among these companies uh, uh, to go further with R&D, and the R&D institutions are prepared to create a national platform for these kind of projects in the next six, seven years. Still, at the background of all these uh, issues and experiences, we have to take into account that the majority of companies in the plastics industry in Poland is facing still the same uh, issues as they were two years ago. So, a lack of technical infrastructure in order to create growth and secure growth for the future, lack of technical know-how, and here is the question, what is the role of the R&D institutions in the near future in order to bring in this technical know-how, a lack of awareness of what biodegradable plastics or sustainable plastics exactly are. Also, during our conference in September in Warsaw, we saw that there are a lot of uh, uh, definitions. There's still a lot of things to be cleared out, and it's a major added value of the plastics project that uh, Andrzej and Petra prepared uh, this kind of uh, dictionary, this kind of uh, clarification uh, for what concerns the uh, connotation of the words uh, used and, and the, the, the definitions and uh, in, in some kind of definitions used. Uh, connected to biodegradable plastic, bioplastic, sustainable plastics, and so on. A lack of financial means, you can say, okay, uh, structural funds will give an opportunity in the next period and it will be no problem uh, that we have access to financial means. But financial means, it also means that we have to secure return on investment. And here, very important is still the uh, lack of awareness among the final consumer. When we did uh, a verification, a lot of companies said that the final consumer sees biodegradable plastic products still as a marketing gimmick and not as a se severe or uh, an important issue. Uh, and it's not really a decision from the side of the final consumer uh, to invest a little bit more money to buy biodegradable plastics uh, and to have this awareness uh, on the environment. So you see, maybe in the room we have participants that see the same problems from their side. This is perhaps also uh, something to discuss uh, later on in the coming hours to come in, at your conference. But we see still a lot of issues uh, to be uh, discussed. Uh, so you can say, what's the added value of the Plastis project according to us from the Polish point of view? Uh, we can say that the roadmap for action gives a clear overview of potential areas of intervention from the side of the companies. Thanks to the roadmap, we were able to bring closer together R&D offers and activities to company needs. Uh, the information exchange between companies and research organizations during seminars and conferences has led to new ideas. Uh, during the conference in uh, September in Warsaw, uh, a representative of a company said that during the meeting he got three, three new ideas uh, for a product range uh, and thanks to uh, meetings with uh, R&D representatives he now has the place to uh, prepare for the second and third new uh, R&D project he plans for the uh, next year. So you see that uh, thanks to the Plastis project there were interventions, there were concrete cooperation uh, opportunities uh, the case study showed really these new uh, cooperation models, yes, that we can focus on practical issues, that we can focus on practical uh, projects uh, where R&D institutions and companies uh, find commonly new answers. And the networking activities, of course, the contacts, international contacts, which were very interesting uh, within this project. So I think 
Plus, this has really uh, helped from the Polish side a lot of companies to get in uh, to interaction with R&D institutions. Also, the R&D institutions in Poland to get into contact with uh, other R&D institutions from Slovakia, Slovenia, and from Italy. So, thank you very much, uh, especially Andrzej, for having had the opportunity to cooperate with you all. And uh, I wish you all the best uh, for today and tomorrow during this conference.